Hello everyone. So we have discussed till now various consumption theories. The consumption theories that we have discussed are four consumption theories basically. So we have discussed about absolute income hypothesis. Then we discussed about the relative income hypothesis, life cycle theory of consumption and permanent income theory of consumption. So these four theories, they are very important from the aspect of macroeconomics. Now in absolute income hypothesis, we said that when our income increases, consumption also increases, but by a lesser amount than the increase in income. In relative income hypothesis, we discussed that our expenditure, consumption expenditure does not depend upon only on the current level of income. Instead, it also depends upon the previously achieved income level which means that we are not going to reduce our consumption expenditure if there is a reduction in the income level, in our current income level. Then we discussed life cycle theory of consumption, wherein we said that uh, the consumer decides consumption expenditure for his for current time period as well as for future time period on the basis of his entire life cycle. So when he does not earn any income, he dissaves. And when he earns the income, he saves. In totality, his dissave will be equal to his total savings. And lastly, we discussed about permanent income theory of consumption, wherein we said that any consumer decides upon the consumption expenditure, not only on the basis of his permanent of his income, but also on the basis of his non-human wealth, also on the basis of the real, uh, on, on the basis of the rate of interest that he gets after, after doing his savings. So all these factors decides the consumption expenditure. Now, since we have discussed all these theories of consumption, let us also discuss paradox of theft that is a part of consumption. We cannot say a part of consumption theory, but associated with our consumption levels. So I'll just open. So we say paradox of theft. Sachin ji, such paradox of theft. So we now this basically means कि कोई भी अगर हमारी underdeveloping country होती है, so वो country try करती है कि हम लोगों का income increase हो, production increase हो. So what happens? Suppose underdeveloping country के पास अगर investment उसको करनी है capital goods में. First I'll tell you in layman terms and then we will move on to proper writing. So suppose हम लोगों को capital investment करना है. In order to do capital investment, we need investment and then this should be equal to our savings now we know that our total income is equal to consumption plus savings so in underdeveloping countries we need to basically increase this savings in order to increase the investment now suppose everyone in the economy decides ki hum logo ko अगर हमारे पास सिर्फ 100 रुपीस की लिमिटेड इनकम है और ये हम अभी डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कर रहे हैं 50 रुपीस कंजम्पशन के लिए और 50 रुपीस सेविंग्स के लिए बट अब हमें लगता है कि हमें इन्वेस्टमेंट इंक्रीज करनी चाहिए 50 नहीं एटलिस्ट 70 रुपीस का इन्वेस्टमेंट होना चाहिए तब हमारा प्रोडक्शन इंक्रीज हो सकता है सो कंज्यूमर्स विल डिसाइड दैट आउट ऑफ दिस दिस 100 रुपीस वी आर गोइंग टू कंज्यूम ओनली 30 रुपीस एंड वी आर गोइंग टू इन्वेस्ट 70 रुपीस so what will have a, happen? Our consumption reduces. Our consumption level reduces. But consumption level reduces होता है. इसका मतलब कि हम लोगों का aggregate demand भी reduce होता है. अगर aggregate demand reduce हो गया, मतलब लोग demand ही नहीं कर रहे हैं, तो फिर production किसके लिए होगी? And eventually our supply will also reduce. Our production will also reduce. And in lieu of producing more, we, we end up on a lower income level. We end up on a lower GDP. So this is paradox of theft. Let us now discuss this properly. So according to this paradox, when all the people in the country try to save more, but they are unable to do so. And in fact, in lieu of saving more, they end up with the same level of saving, but with a declined consumption and standard of living. So exactly the case that we have discussed now. Now Keynes explained this paradox. 
So he said that when all the people try to save more in an underemployment equilibrium, that this will lead to decline in consumption and this decline in consumption will lead to decline in aggregate demand for goods and services and when the demand reduces this means that national income reduces because now is demand to satisfy we do resources ki nahi hai, as a result of which factor payments reduce ho jata hai. Matlab, factor payment reduce hua, to our national income reduce hua. and as a result the savings will fall to a small level, but with reduced level of consumption and standard of living. Basically, we are saying ki man lo hum logo ko apna, I'll just repeat myself, ki humne apna consumption reduce kiya hai or saving increase ki hai with the intention ki humara GDP increase karega ya income increase karegi. But jab consumption reduce hua, so aggregate demand be reduced ho gaya. Aggregate demand reduce hua. So hamari factor payment reduce ho gai. And as a result, it means ki hum logo ka national income bhi reduce ho gaya. So jab national income reduce hua, it means ki ye jo ab hum 100 rupees yaha pe earn kar rahe te, this 100 rupees will also reduce. So, now this 100 is suppose 80 rupees. Now, we have to 80 rupees ko hume divide karna hai between consumption and savings. So, now out of this 80 rupees, if we have to save 70 rupees, we will save 70 rupees. Because we will save 10 rupees ka consumption. We will save 10 rupees. We will save 10 rupees. We will save 10 rupees. We will save 10 So, basically, we will have a lower level of savings rate pe aa with a lower level of income. This is what we mean by paradox of theft. So this is not exactly our consumption theory, but this is associated with consumption topic per se because it tells us that if our consumption is reduced, then our national income is reduced. So this was paradox of theft. Now, in the next class, uh, so consumption theories are over in this topic. So if you have any doubt associated with the consumption theory, you can ask me. In the next lesson, we will start discussing the concept of multiplier. Not in this lesson. So multiplier, we have employment multiplier, investment multiplier. And then we will also discuss about the derivation of this multiplier, how to put it in use, and what are the leakages of multiplier. And, the, and while discussing the multiplier, we will also discuss marginal propensity to consume and its rate. Thereafter, we will discuss another principle that is principle of acceleration. And then we will discuss another part that is super multiplier, wherein we combine the principle of accelerator as well as the principle of the multi concept of multiplier. So these will be our, this, this associates with the multiplier topic that we will start in the next lesson. Till then, please take care. Bye-bye.